start with, well, there we go. Yeah, I'd love to start with maybe a couple of minutes really quickly of some quick networking. So we we just want to hold the fort for a little bit, let folks get into room with in the room without any interruption. So let me invite you all, if you have cameras and microphones available, please come online with us. And um, I would love to just kind of go around the room and get everyone to quickly introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your business. So Coach V, I see that you are the first on with a camera. I hope that you have a microphone, but please take a moment to quickly introduce yourself. Oh, well, my name is Natalie Borejo and I am a uh, MAPS business coach. Um, and I also have a real estate company in Atlanta. I'm actually in my apartment in Barcelona right now. So if it starts getting dark, it's because of the time difference. <laughs> so nice. yes. So I'm bi-continental. I live two weeks in Atlanta, two weeks here. So um glad to be on. Um getting involved in ABC more. Uh especially we'll be try to be there when we have our get togethers first of the month so I can get to know all these beautiful faces, but that's what I do. All right, fantastic. Uh Natalie, thank you so much. And uh, that sounds amazing to be in Barcelona right now. Um, it is <laughs> perfect. And we have Jalen coming in. So welcome, Jalen. You're right on time. Um, let me jump over to uh Miss Andrea Felicia Burnett. Please take a moment to quickly introduce yourself if you can, Andrea. And you're muted, just in case you are talking. Oh, going once, going twice. Oh, all right, Andrea, we're gonna bounce around. Uh, please let us know if you can't come off mute. Um, Jovan Franklin, are you there? And can you come off mute to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us about your business. All right, family, we, we got to talk okay. about it now. I'm sorry about that. I was okay. having a little difficulty coming off mute. I was, yes, I was going to say, my name is Jovan Franklin, and I'm with Operation Hope. Um, we're partners with um, ABC, and I am the coalition specialist um, with, with um, Operation Hope. And I'm also a small business coach as well. Sorry, I'm not on camera. Oh, no, no. Thank you for uh, being able to come off mute. I was going to say, guys, we this is part networking. So I want everybody to take every opportunity to talk about your business. That's how we learn more and can connect further. So um, let me what? try one more person. Oh, please, uh, Natalie, say that again. Uh, can you share what Operation Hope is? Oh, great question. Uh, Jovan, please take another minute. And then Sorry we'll about that. Operation Hope is a nonprofit financial literacy organization, and we help um, people who are starting, growing, and scaling their businesses. Also, with um, in the small business development area, we help with um, helping folks raise their credit scores through budget, budget and credit and, and money management. We also do um, home ownership, where we're able to assist with getting the HUD certifications. Uh, we work, work with the city of um, Atlanta, uh, educating their um, students and helping them open bank accounts. Um, so it's all about financial literacy and um, generational wealth. We do disaster relief as well. So we have a lot of components here at Operation Hope. All right, fantastic. Uh, Jovan, thank you again for uh, stepping up. Uh, Coach V, thank you for asking. That was a, a perfect extra question. And we'll love to try one more person. I'm just randomly picking everyone. So um, Davida Cole, are you able to come online and share a quick introduction to yourself and your business? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. All right. So um, my name is Davida Cole. I am a commercial real estate advisor with Greenwood Commercial Real Estate. Uh, we're one of the largest national um, diverse commercial estate firms based in Atlanta, but we're covering 23 states. So we do offer businesses. Um, and we like to think of it more of a business strategy when it comes to finding commercial real estate space. So it's not just finding you a space that, you know, you're like, oh, I like this location. I want to be there. It's like, no, what does that look like for your long term success? How is that sustaining your business, especially when it comes to being in down markets like this? Um, so. 
um, you know, like I said, we, we do leasing, sales, buying, exchange. Um, we cover office, retail, industrial, land, anything you can think of. But we're all about business success and profitability. All right. Fantastic. Davida, thank you so much for that quick introduction. Um, everyone, let's go ahead and get into the, the core of our time today. But um, I do want to encourage you all, please take a moment to connect with someone through the chat or share some information. But um, the, the goal of this, obviously, within our Atlanta Black Chambers is to connect business owners who can create amazing opportunities for yourselves, your businesses, and your customers and communities. So um, with that, everybody, I want to go ahead and jump in. I'm really excited, again, that everyone is able to jump on and join us today. So we're going to have an amazing conversation um, that we're calling the Foundations of Resilience. So the game plan today is really to uh, talk about that amazing journey that we go on as professionals, as individuals, and most importantly, as business leaders and business owners. And we want to start this year off with setting a strong foundation for success. So we're going to have amazing um, panelists giving us their insights, expertise, and experiences around everything from mindset to strategic planning to adapting to change, everything, right? Um, so my goal today is, again, just to kind of kick off the show, but I'm honored to be able to turn this over to, uh, uh, actually, let me highlight, all of our panelists today are members of our Training and Professional Development Committee, every last one of them. So uh, again, you got the top of the top uh, in terms of just business leaders experience, and they have a lot to teach and share today, but uh, I'm honored to turn it over to our moderator for today. Ms. Shelly Jeffcoat. So Shelly, I am passing the mic to you, my friend. Thank you so much. And I just want to confirm everyone can hear me. You can hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Y'all, I have been looking forward to this event for quite some time, not um, not only because Dr. Lisa Richardson is here and Jalen Jones is here and Raheem, Raheem is here, but this topic is really important. And I want to, I want to pivot and just say one thing. It's not uh, it's not just for business owners. There are a lot of folks who are straddling. Maybe you're still in uh, a day job, and the, you know you're you're leading some side hustles, or maybe you're running business on the side. Whatever you're doing, but the conversation we're going to have today about resilience. This is so timely because of everything that's happening within the business, within the industries that we're in. And obviously, you can just go on LinkedIn and see all of the org shifts and changes that even larger organizations. Or are kind of experiencing right now. So I have been looking forward to this because I needed to be poured back into. I'm a business owner. I'm an exec at an organization. I lead a prayer ministry. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I do all the things. But the folks that we have here today are really going to be the right folks to talk to us about how we build on some of the experiences that we have. So the way I'm going to do this, so first off, I just want uh, for our speakers just to wave so everybody can see you. They know who you are. There you are. <laughs> just want to wave. By the way, again, we're really super proud to be members of this particular, the best committee there is at ABC. We got to show, throw that throw that out. So the question I'm going to start with, um, and I think again, as we're as you're in the audience, I do want to make this interactive. And so, if you have uh, questions or comments, drop them in the chat. We're going to come and you know come through there as well. The question I wanted to start with is, what is resilience? Because if you go on the Google streets, <laughs> you're going to hear different different uh, types of definitions. And uh, the one definition I wanted to lean into, and I'm looking at my notes, is the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from dif difficulties and toughness. And truthfully, a lot of times you're not able to recover quickly. It's the fact that you can bounce back and how you do that. And how do you do that in business? So I'm going to start. My first question is actually going to go to Dr. Lisa. Uh, she's going to talk to us a little bit about um, Main Street Mart Martech, so telling us a little bit about what your company is. But my question to you, Dr. Lisa, is can you share a defining moment of resilience in your journey with Main Street Martech? Well, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Lisa. Pardon me. <clears throat> and... Ooh, the divine, defining moment. There, there's a lot of defining moments and there's a lot of resilience that, that entrepreneurship in general takes. Main Street has evolved and the fact that it's still here uh, going on going on 15 years later is, is a testament to bouncing back several times. So even the, even the launch of the business came from 
being let go from my uh, ed management job. And once upon a time, I was supposed to be someone's dean of students at a university. That didn't work out because there was no job waiting after grad, grad school, just waiting for me to get there. And so I found myself at home in my, my lovely new home uh, with no position and a preemie to take care of. And so I had to take, I had to figure out what I was going to do with the knowledge I gained so far. And so I started doing websites because my assistantship was in tech and it just grew from there. First, I started doing, doing a, a couple of websites that found that I liked it and moved on from there. And then when I realized that my, my clients were not really getting anything out of the websites I built because they didn't have anything else to go with that, that, that precipitated my move into marketing and ultimately marketing tech. So over the years, we've fallen down, well, I've fallen down and gotten back up. And Main Street now is a, a content management company focused on mid-stage businesses whose clients are other businesses. So I am your, your chief, content, chief content officer, and I help you manage the content inside your organization and outside your organization, which goes far beyond marketing to make sure that you can break through that break even plateau. Wow, I love that. I wanted to call out um, something that you said, Dr. Lisa, and then I'm gonna go to Raheem next. Um, mm -hmm. Something that you said about, you, you were responding to the needs of the marketplace. And I think when we, when we look at opportunity, especially as a business owner, you have to be in tune to what opportunity looks like, right? Opportunity doesn't always show up in a pretty bow in a box. <laughs> you do have to understand when there's a need. So, so, so taking that, you know, taking that in mind, Raheem, can you share a little bit about your, maybe what, what's your uh, moment and, and how, how you as, uh, as the wizard, the transformational wizard, okay. <laughs> how, you know, how for you, is there a defining moment within your journey, within your business that you shifted as well? Absolutely. Um, Rich Rising, um, I ain't gonna say my name again, cause y'all already done heard it. So me becoming the transformation wizard is really me becoming everything I needed, you know? So in my business, I have two businesses. One is Rock Crystal. So these, my adornments, honey, dripped in jewels. That's me. I hand make all of these, but also right, the, the transformation wizard is um, specifically dedicated right now this year to black women, queer folks, and trans folks, helping them becoming more authentically empowered so they can live the lives that they desire and deserve, helping them to be more positively impactful in their personal and professional communities. And we do that through the lens of wellness, creating sustainability for your energy, because if you are not well, you can't be out here saving the world. You know what I'm saying? Femme people, queer folks, we've always been seen as uh, the nurturers, the caregivers, those who have to support everybody. And then after you give all your energy away, it's like, all right, girl, go take care of yourself, but make sure that you come back here so you can take care of me tomorrow. It's like, no, we have to be able to honor the specificness, the magic, the, 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 the majesty of who we are. Um, and in doing that work, um, I've had to I've had to learn how to create boundaries, a lot of boundaries. Um, my work has has made me uh, face a lot of my fears, um, be very clear about what it is that I need, being able to ask for help, and then assisting others in doing those same things. Like business is based on relationship, but I say relationship because it's active. Mm -hmm. People get in relationships, honey, and they die. But in a relationship, we understand that this is growing, that it's changing, that it's transforming. So we show up in that energy of transformation in ourselves, which is why I became the transformation wizard. Understanding that I am always in a liminal space, always in that energy in between. And that's where the magic happens. So long way to the answer. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know, I became the transformation wizard. Yeah, I appreciate oh, that. So how did you become, so when you became the transmit, so there's a couple of, and I know the chat's gonna blow up. By the way, y'all, please drop your, your thoughts in the in the chat. I am watching it. There's a, literally someone saying, praise God for boundaries, because that, and that's something that you hit on. And as you're as you're sharing your um your mindset, 
um, amidst your own challenges, the challenges that you're dealing. Yeah, he is amazing. Um, can you talk a little bit more about boundaries, especially when you're in business, especially for those who might be straddling? You know, like I said, not everybody is full full time in business, and you you have to have the right mindset. Can you talk a little bit about boundaries and how you were able to build up your resilience doing that in your business? Absolutely. So the thing is, um, people who a lot of people in their lives have uh, grown up in codependent situations. So the idea of boundaries is, is they see that as a personal attack against them versus understanding that my boundaries keep me safe and they're also going to keep you safe because you're not gonna have me blow up on you, okay? So I had to learn nonviolent communication and nonviolent communication is a social emotional learning technique that helps you to communicate what it is that you need, what your values are, and honor yourself without making the other person feel like they're doing something wrong, right? And so when, we, when we're when we able to communicate in clarity in ways that empower both me and you, then we both feel good in doing business with each other. You know, I just had to, I just had to learn how to talk to people and understand that you have goals that you desire to achieve and so do I. So how can this be a win-win situation versus that I'm gonna win and you're gonna get the little crumbs? I love it. There's a there's a note in the chat. I uh, love these points that you're saying. Everything I needed, your majesty, creating boundaries, facing fears, asking for help, um, saying all that in relationship. And, you know, just just uh, everybody is all over this. So I appreciate that. And I want to I want to go to uh, to Jalen, a CEO of Black, Pretty and Paid. <laughs> and you are Black, Pretty and Paid. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask when we're talking about the mindset, because you're in a very competitive landscape with agency work. Okay. That's just the yes. fact. <laughs> okay. So I wonder if you could talk about the competitive mindset that you need and how are you actually maintaining that without losing your mind? Oh, yes. Honestly, I feel like exactly what I'm going to say ties into Dr. Lisa and what a Rahim is sharing, because there's a theme of resilience is being able to pivot without completely going into a different business venture or construct. Like entrepreneurship is not a linear journey and we have to be bold enough to pivot with the market in order to be resilient. And that's how I got into agency work. So I started as a business development coach and I realized that there was a gap, right? So if there's any coaches in the house, holler at me in the chat, drop a one, tell me you're a coach. And coaching is very transformational, but the gap that I saw with my clients who are predominantly women who were under or over the six figure mark is that they are so dedicated to professional development that they're taking on many investments, <laughs> um, tens of twenties and thirties of dollars, thirties of thousands of dollars in professional development. So they're taking in a lot of information. But the gap was the implementation. And so I still wanted to coach and, and I still wanted to serve my clients and have this proximity to them. But the additional layer to resilience was learning how to pivot in that gap. So my competitive edge as a business development coach is that not only are we coaching you, not only are we mentoring and advising, but now we're here on this back end of your business, helping you with the implementation, the done for you work. So I'm best suited and fitted for clients who are like, I want to show up as the talent. <laughs> You know, I don't want to always have to put the stuff together, the landing pages, the funnels. I don't want to run the launch by myself. I don't want to launch my book or my program or my event um, by myself because that's the boundary, you know, that we just talked about is owning like my journey and understanding this is who I am and this is what I want to do. So as an agency owner, yes, it's competitive work but you have to find your competitive edge. And two of ours is number one, as the leader of the agency, I'm a business development coach, but the other layer is my strength is sales. And most agency owners who offer what I offer do not offer support with procurement of clients and contracts. So you have to figure out your pivots, right? We have to honor our clients and what they want and what they need so we can fill those gaps. And thirdly, we have to find what our competitive edge is. And you will never 
go without business, no matter what, um, you know, economic situation we're in, there may be fluctuations, but as long as you manage those pivot points, those competitive edge points, you'll always be in, in demand with your clients because you'll be on track with what their needs are at that time. That's fantastic. There's a, there's a couple of notes um, where Darlene was repeating. This is a whole, like, <laughs> this is a whole t-shirt. Entrepreneurship <laughs> is not a linear journey and addressing the gap. You talked about the gap of implementation and uh, Nia saying that that's kind of where she is right now. She's been operating in all of the positions and she just wants to be the <sighs> talent. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit on, um, and, and this point again that you made, I'm a whole testimony to when you have to pivot in business. So I launched this company in a company in 2022, and I'm nowhere near doing what I thought I was going to do, but mm. pivot, pivot will push you into purpose really quickly. Okay. And so I am, I, I can't, I can't tell you how blessed I am to be here at an ABC event. I'm just going to take a second and just be thankful and grateful. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm sitting at a panel with, you know, these amazing, talented, successful business people. Y'all don't even get it. This is what pivot looks like if you just lean into it. Right. So, so when we're talking about setbacks, you know, when you talk about setback, I want, I wonder, Dr. Lisa, if you talk about maybe a, a setback that taught you a valuable lesson. Well, I, I I actually have my favorite fail story, <laughs> and I I use it because I I call, I call it my thirty thousand dollar gift to all of you. <laughs> so before uh, what is now Main Street was, I had a software a software training business, and it taught me why Main Street needed to happen. So I fairly intelligent person, and I was teaching software develop, software training for, uh, at the time, Microsoft Office, and we had clients like TSA and so on. But outside of the, the, or, the companies that were referred to us, there was no movement in terms of getting clients. And so I came in. When I started, it was a fantastic idea. Uh, my... The first round investment, my family, my mom uh, actually liquidated her her 401k to give me that money to launch my business. That's that's where that $30,000 came from. And no strings, no interest, no nothing. I I bargain hunted, I, I laid out that place. And at the end of that first year, I was evicted from that building with nothing because the one thing I didn't have was anyone to know what I had to offer. So that the thirty thousand dollar value of marketing that that was my that was my lesson right there because I was like, okay, well, I'm in the right place. I've got the right location. And I've got all the great stuff. I've got brand new laptops. I've got security. I ain't got no people. <laughs> There's no one banging down my door and, and dreaming of my, you know, really long name place. They're not searching for me. And that was my very first and most expensive lesson in the value of marketing. Wow. And that that is expensive. That's why I do it now for all of you. Yes. So I can save you from the thirty thousand dollar mistake. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. So uh, transformation wizard, I'm asking for free advice <laughs> for my <laughs> friends in the chat, <laughs> okay? So when we talk about um, transformation, how how do you manage it as you're working with your clients? So a lot of us are not adaptable to change, <clears throat> okay? Um, change is challenging for, for a lot of us, okay? <laughs> so I wonder if you could give us some advice on how uh, what's the approach you think we should take when we're adapting to change? And again, obviously, obviously tying it back to how um, you've been able to be resilient in, in business. Yeah. So the thing about transformation and change is that we have to honor that everything has a cycle. This is a life, death, life cycle. The bounce back is the rebirth. 
But we have to understand that every aspect of our lives, whether it is relationship, whether it is business, whether it is even the way that we see ourselves, those images, those ideas will die. And it's a, it requires a softening, a gentleness, because transformation and death is hard. Um, a few years ago, I lost my niece. And it was the craziest experience because in that I had a show to do as well. So earlier in the day, I facilitated her home going, going service. And then later that night, I had a show where I had to be like, <coughs> and I was like, this is like the twilight zone. But what I understood was my baby wanted me to see how resilient I could be in such a challenging experience. When we have someone that we that we lose on this side, it's so that they can be in spirit to assist us from the other side. I, I truly believe that. And so as I'm as I'm I'm assisting people in finding and holding space for their transformation, I'm typically the 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 voice of compassion, of love, of support. So they know it's okay for you to fall apart, because you're gonna fall apart. And I will hold this space. So that as you fall, you can have a soft space to land. And then we just continue to build you back up. Transformation is challenging, but it is necessary for our evolution. We will not get through what we are experiencing in the world on the planet without transforming our thoughts, our hearts, and our energy to be more aligned with our greatness, with the divine, you know? So was, did that answer your question? Oh yeah, it did. I'm just soaking it in y'all. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so um, Jarvis is saying, I love these types of conversations. You'll never hear these types of stories in any business books. And yeah. And thanks for sharing that deep and personal. And I appreciate your, your, all of your um, transparency. You're right. You listen, you go in business or you go to some other events. I'm not going to say the names of them, but um, you go to other events and you hear people share their their success, I call them their Instagram life where everything is beautiful, everything is going very well, you know, they, they're taking the picture next to the, the newest luxury car they can find, right? But um, this is work. <laughs> Business is work while life is lifing. So, you know, I wanted to come to um, to Jaylen in, in your practice um, in, and within your agency talking about a balancing act now, right? Because now you have, you have to find the right balance between how you address challenges with yourself and with your clients, <laughs> right? So how, so how are you balancing through the challenges? And then how are you, how do you build up resilience within yourself so that you can also support your business? You know, again, picking up on what we just heard about, you know, being transformational and adapting to change. Yes, um, I hope what I'm about to say is gonna be helpful. Um, in regards to ba the balancing act. And um, one of the coaches, the fellow coach in the chat was talking about just the art of balance and how it's actually not about balance as much as like everything just being even, but more so about priority. It's about, um, you know, us operating in alignment, misalignment will make you feel this word that we call out of balance. Misalignment is actually what that is. When you are not in alignment with your purpose, when you are not in alignment with your passion, when you are not operating in your gift and your highest level skill, you will always feel imbalanced. But going back to what I want to share as far as the solution to finding quote unquote balances is I like to call it maintaining your frequency. Life is always going to life. Always. <laughs> always life is going to life. And too often we let life cycles stop us, pause us, imposter syndrome us. Uh, you know, it has us doing very sometimes um, desperate things. Um, it has us going silent and it has us going into the background because we're like, well, life is life and so-and-so passed. Uh, you know, this bill just hit me, this tax bill. You know, we start making this coin, the, this, these taxes, this, woo. you know, the, the payroll, the this, the that. You start letting these, 
these outside factors infect what's happening, affect what's happening inside of you. And the greatest advice I can give to everybody on this call, even speaking into myself, is learning how to hold your frequency even when life is lifing. This is the mastery that it takes to be an entrepreneur, to be a small business leader, layering on top of that, being a Black, you know, uh, business, small business leader. We are doing something just magnificent. Creating a business in this lifetime is just as equal to me as creating life. So you are doing something revolutionary. And now we're betting on ourselves to make hundreds and thousands and millions and even some of us billions of dollars. You got to learn how to hold your frequency. Like what's going to keep you even when everything else is falling apart? So what I like to do is two things. From a money perspective, I like to create an anchor for my bank account. You know, everybody out there, you know, has, we all universally think of zero as zero. But as a business owner, you have to create a new zero for yourself. What is the number you are going to decide your bank accounts will never go under again? And once you make that decision, stuff is going to shift for you. So you don't have, zero is no longer any of our zero anymore. Some people's zero in, in here may be 5,000. The account may, may never go under that. Some of us, it may be $200. Some of us, it may be 10,000. Whatever it is, create your new zero. The next thing is create what I call an authority anchor. An authority anchor is basically a quote, a Bible verse, a phrase, a memory that will remind you of who you are whenever everything else is going crazy. Okay, so that's what I like to recommend as uh, uh, as business owners. And if you don't mind repeating the question for me, I had one more point that I wanted to make sure I got out. Oh, actually, we're going to pull a little bit more on that thread because, again, you hey. have she's preaching, y'all. And I'm, <laughs> I don't care if y'all are not catching it. I'm receiving all of this. OK, <laughs> so the first the first thing I just want to reiterate when you, you talked about creating a new zero, I've never heard of that before, but I could see, you know, and again, that's just, you know, there's somebody saying when you get close to the new zero, it's time to do red light, green light on your expenses. Yeah. So look at the way that we look at finance. And I want to say, especially for those of us who might be on this call, who've said the words, uh, I want to, I want to be the breakthrough in my family. And I don't, I want to get rid of generational um, uh, curses. I'm just calling out all these things we say, right? Well, you do mm -hmm. actually have to put a plan in place. So even starting from the way that we look at our finance um, from a, from a, as a business owner, business leader, personal, whatever, right? That is this, that is amazing to me, the way that you shared that. Um, when you talk about, um, when you're talking about balance from your perspective, the, the point about authority that you shared, I thought was really intriguing because I think the other thing that uh, small, small business owners have many people are you're coming into creating this new uh, business because you were <clears throat> excused from another role, right? So you had to find an, a stream of income, right? Uh, everybody didn't show up to create a business because you you had the dream, the vision, and you, you have a cut that thing out, right? So a lot of people, you know, fell into if you if you don't mind me saying that into this new stream of income and in, in a different way, uh, and and what that does then you get to a point where you you have to understand your identity as a business owner is very different from your identity mm -hmm. as a sales rep as a, a di very different from who you were as an analyst or a customer service rep now you got this business right but the point you make about authority and the authority that we carry with our business right you, you know how are you showing up in those rooms, Jalen? Especially again, because you have you're in a competitive agency. I wonder if you talk a little bit more about the authority that we need. Why is this? Why is this important? I'm gonna tell you why this is important. Because we're, we're talking about being resilient, and part of being resilient, you have to have the character to show up in rooms time and time mm -hmm. again. That builds you up. Okay, so now let's talk about authority and, and give us some advice on the authority and how you manage that so that you're you're continuing to be resilient and bouncing back. Yeah, so for sure. One thing I want to start with is this is such an important question because I recommend 
in order for us to be resilient as business owners, let's just call it what it is. We have to be making money. There is no, I, I live in right near the Mall of Georgia and all of these businesses that open every single day, they open for one reason. And it's because they know they have customers coming. And so for us, resilience is doing business development every single day. You're either creating sales every day or you're creating opportunities for, for sales. Um, you're building relationship equity, you're networking, you're marketing, you're lead generating, you're doing sales. And so that is resilience. And in terms of going into these rooms and you know standing in your authority, I just want you to remember something really quick, just so I could just get a, 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 a C on who's in the room. If you came from a job or a career before you were an entrepreneur, just drop a two in the chat. And then I'm going to while you're doing that, I'm going to share with you that you likely were making either less than 1% to 3% of what the company makes off of your role. Your portion of that was like less than 3%. Some of us zero, zero something percent. Okay. And so if you ever had to question your authority, I want you to know that the company hired you because they knew that you would directly impact their top line, bottom line, revenue in such a way so you may have not made the millions for yourself just yet but i'm sure you did it for many companies remember who you are in terms of your skill set um and when you go into rooms lead with that lead with being a highly skilled expert being a go-to and when you stand in that other people will feel that so that is what I would say. And, and just lastly, I would just recommend you have to go in rooms where you can be the authority, you know? So some of us spend a little bit of our time either alone. So our, earlier I said entrepreneurship isn't linear, but I also want to tell you entrepreneurship isn't lonely. So shout out to you for being on this call today. We have to get out in these streets for real, not just social media, in these spaces and places. And when you go into these rooms, make sure that opportunity is there. You as a business owner can't afford to go in rooms where there's no money and there's no opportunity and there's no need for your authority. So that's how we do that. We get into rooms where the money is. Wow, that, that yes. <laughs> <laughs> what she said, ditto, yes, yes. So I, so I want to turn to Dr. Lisa a little bit now um, talking about we go on where the money is, <laughs> right? I mean, we're in business to make money. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> we're in business to make money, okay? And and we talked about um, opportunities. And I was saying before, opportunity shows up differently. Some, some people will miss opportunity because it doesn't look like what you thought it would look like. My opportunity is not yours. But when I see an opportunity, if you miss it, I'm going to take it because <laughs> I'm hungry, right? So I want to talk to Dr. Lisa about your, what are some of your go-to methods? How are you aligning, like going after a certain opportunity and then being resilient when that opportunity, maybe that one fell through, but it led to another one. How do you, how do you manage that going after opportunity and still being resilient and doing that? Well, what's really, really important is to know where you're going. What is your ultimate goal? And then you can reverse engineer the, you almost re reverse engineer the opportunities to get there. Because so my clients typ typically are, you know, three to five years in, they know what they're doing. They, they're, they're, good at, they're good at running their business. But there's a, there's a point where you get there and it's like, okay, well, I can't do anything else. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what else to do. And what I would say is double down on who's supposed to know who you are mm -hmm. and let the people who need you see you. As Jalen said, get it, get into the right rooms where they're looking for your authority. A lot of us, when we're, we're, we got bogged down into everyday work, we don't look for speaking engagements anymore. We don't look for opportunities to be be this star of a webinar and we're missing golden opportunities that don't really cost anything to present our our expertise to the group and so 
when you join something like ABC, make sure you're not just there. Don't just be a member. Join a committee. It, it's, it's, extra, it's extra work. But it's not a, it, listen, not doing anything costs a lot more than doing something. So take the time, give yourself the investment. Doesn't have to be financial. It could be, time is very expensive as well. So use your time wisely and make, your, make the opportunities happen. And if you've got to create a conference for yourself so that you can be, get on stage and talk to people, then make that happen. And you can do that by partnering with a lot of other people in your circle, in your adjacent business industry, or complementary industry. So you can create opportunities to show your expertise, but without doing any extra, any whole lot of extra work, you can take advantage of the opportunities that you're already standing right next to without looking at really closely. Wow, that's powerful. Again, the chat's lighting up. And there is a, there's a couple of folks saying, I'm I'm re I'm recommitting to the committee. Come on in. <laughs> Come on back. Come on back. If you're if you're by the way, if you're not uh this is a shameless plug, but um if you're not a member of ABC, why aren't you? What's going on? $30 a month. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> so I want to go to uh Transformational Wizard, Mr. White. Um, I want to talk to you about um, juggling multiple, I call them spinning multiple plates. And I'm going to say this because I know everybody isn't the same. And I think he and I are, we're very, we're aligned in this thing. It ain't for everybody. Some people are able to spin multiple plates, do many things very well. And some people are meant to do one thing very well. And I know from what I know already about the transformational wizard, he's like me. We spin multiple plates very well. What does that mean? It means that we can have multiple streams of income going on <laughs> at the same time. We enter different rooms <laughs> at the same time, but it takes resilience for you to be able to do that. So I wanted to find out um, as a transformational wizard, what advice you have for maybe some of our guests who are trying to figure out how they spend multiple. Now, when I say multiple plates, I mean, I listed some of the things at the top of the call that I'm into, some of the things in my space. That ain't my resume, okay? So can you give some advice to people who are spending maybe multiple things or, you know, they started this business, but they're still working their day job. They, they're, they're in that, they're, you know, they're, they have a successful business, but they want to look at, you know, other opportunities. Can you give some advice on how, we can adjust as folks who spin multiple plates. Absolutely. So uh, first I would say, naturally, you are a multidimensional being. You exist on many planes already. Your body is its own experience, your thoughts, your emotions, your energy, your awareness. So already you spin in plates. So just honor that, <laughs> just you living and put on top of that, you're black, you're femme, you're queer, you're whatever. Those all in place, honey. So you you out here like this, okay? <laughs> Naturally. Now, the biggest thing we have to know is to manage our energy. I have a robust spiritual practice. I meditate. I ground. I pray. I create shields of divine protection so that as I'm entering those spaces that we're talking about, I know the difference between my energy and other people's energy. And if you are empathic, if you are a person who feels what other people feel, then all the more reason you need to be doing that work. Next is making sure that you have time and boundaries with yourself, honoring that, hey, I have time for this part of my business, this part of my life, I'm nourishing this part of my relationship, and also you must create time for you. People get so wrapped up in all of the place that they're juggling that they, that they play fall. The plate that is your well-being, that is your light, that is your magnificence, that is your zhuzh, you know? And so the resilience is also knowing how to delineate and prioritize yourself in all of that. Because without you, nothing gets done. I repeat, without you, nothing gets done. So once you go down, all your plates fall. So how are you also nourishing yourself? What things are you consuming? 
not just what you're eating, but the things that you're watching, the people that you're around, the energies that you're in. That's also affecting how you're showing up in your life, how you're showing up in your world. Are you having nourishing relationships with those who are close to you that feed you, that empower you to continue to show up? You have to evaluate all of those things. And whatever is not in alignment with your greatest and highest good, you thank it, you bless it, and you send that on. Because everything and everybody cannot come with you as you continue to elevate. I divorced my best friend of 14 years because I realized we were not headed in the same direction and I didn't actually like him no more. I'm like, I don't like who you are. It was fine in undergrad, but now in this level of my life, while I'm getting more spiritually aligned, you don't even, you don't even mess with God like that. And I'm not saying that you have to be, um, uh, well, no, I am saying you gotta have some connection to the divine. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't care what it looked like for you, but it, that is important to me because I live my life in connection to the divine. So if you are a person who doesn't value that, we just can't be in the same boat, baby. And I love you and I thank you and I release you in love. I love that. I love that. And the, when we were, we're thinking, and there's the, the chat's going, I'm, I'm trying to catch up with y'all. He's, isn't he amazing? Um, everyone can't go with you on your journey. Facts. Bad company corrupts. So watch who you follow. Absolutely. That's all major. And, you know, this just all the love and all the love for all of the panelists, by the way. And again, I'm missing stuff because I'm all up in their business right now. But I, that, you know, the, the point about releasing and letting people go even in business is very very important that's also part of resilience right because part of your bounce back as the business owner is sometimes you have to tell clients no and sometimes there are opportunities that you have to say no to and, and again sometimes it's you know the the wonderful uh family members who give you the unsolicited advice you have to be able to know how to say even no to that so I want to come back to Jay Lynn and as we're talking about no and maybe strategies for how we manage stress when it comes to this, because again, this is taxing. And so the point that we heard just now, we talk about how you're managing your energy and how you're letting people in into your, your space. Um, you know, folks bring stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so does making more money. It does bring stress if you don't know how to manage it, right? So can you talk about how how you manage stress and 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 I'm gonna ask the same question to Dr. Lisa and I'm gonna come back to A. Rahim White about how you manage how do you manage stress and you know well the wellness part how are you taking care of yourselves well if you don't mind sharing that with our with our audience absolutely and I'm and I'm gonna be transparent and say it's a journey every level where you feel like you got it figured out then you get to the next level and you're expanded and you're like whoo. I thought I had just went through this Jesus, but it's back again. So I'm going to say three words and I'll explain them. The first one is rest. And I, I have, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit because I'm not yet married and I do not have children. So when it's, when I say rest, I mean, I mean, I have a dog, but, and he takes up all my time, uh, that's why I had to get myself down here because I know he would be on this panel as well. But technically, my level of responsibility is is different from someone who is a wife, who is a mother, who, you know. So rest means something different for all of us. So I'll get back to that. The other one is help. Um, some of us have a story that we tell ourselves around getting help and getting support. You paid for it before and it didn't work. Uh, you when you do pay for it, you know, you have to kind of tell people what to do so much that you're like, dang, I should just do it myself. Um, or you've been told no. Maybe in your personal life, when you need help, you feel ignored, you feel unappreciated, you feel unseen. So we have these stories around help, right? But rest and help are our two big ones. And the third one goes back uh, to authority in terms of uh, how we manage stress, how we manage people, how we manage our business. So authority also means you knowing that this business does not control you and you are not the business and you are not the skill and you are not the service. You lead all of this and it should be listening to you 
The client shouldn't be telling you what to do. The business shouldn't be telling you what to do. You have to flip that thing around because many of us as entrepreneurs, because we came in that pathway you said earlier about how we may have potentially gotten fired or we had to quit or we were filling a need that we needed, we come in that way. And sometimes we're lopsided on understanding like that we're the leader, right? Um, so please flip it back. If you started one way, please, at some point in the journey, you got to flip it on its head and remind yourself that you lead this stuff. The other thing is you can't go everywhere. You can't be in every room. You can't take pictures with everyone. You can't take on everyone as clients. You can't help everybody. You can't take every invoice. You're going to have to turn some things away when you kind of realize what's not in alignment with you. Going back to help, I need you to think about something today. Like if you don't implement anything else you heard, I hope you seep it all into your psyche and you use it when you need it. But please ask yourself, who is it that I need next? Who could take me to my next level so that I don't have to do this alone? And I bet my bottom dollar that said person is inside of the elect Atlanta Black Chambers. Get help. That's how you re remove stress. I just recently hired a CFO in December. She was already on my list. Like she had been on my list for a year, but I needed to make sure number one, there was money for her to manage. And then I had the money to bear, okay? Um, but it's so beautiful having her as a confidant. And um, I was telling her that I needed to shift over some of my payroll practices and systems. And instead of it being something that I have to do now, her agency now can take over payroll for me. So now I don't have to put that on my to-do list. That's just one little thing. Get help. Figure out where you need help. And then going back to the first thing, rest. Rest doesn't necessarily mean just getting a full night of sleep. I don't even think that's enough in terms of rest. There are so many different types of rest. I encourage you to Google what are the different types of rest. And there's actually a free quiz that you can take to figure out what area of your being needs the most rest and how you can practice rest in those areas. I want to recommend to everybody on this call to build in breath breaks and you know throughout your day where you can it is not about you going to lay down and take a nap old folks you say once you get out the bed for the day you out you don't get back in the bed I don't know if I believe that so much but it's still kind of stuck in my being a little bit but what I at least will do is after this phone call I'm not hopping to nothing else immediately I'm gonna sit right here and decompress for at least five minutes for at least five minutes Five minutes, set a timer. Incremental rest is powerful. Too often we go from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. You, you just don't even realize that you're just bouncing onto the next thing and you haven't rested. Incremental rest will help you way more than getting seven hours or eight hours of sleep at night. Okay, so those are the three things I would say to kind of manage stress. Rest, getting help, slash support, and standing in your authority. Wow, that is amazing. And we've dropped, you know, we've dropped these, um, the verbiage into the chat. There's also a quick reminder from the ABC, and then we're going to go to Dr. Lisa with the same question around stress management, that this video will be live on, not live, the replay. Y'all can catch the replay on ABC's YouTube in, 20, in 48 hours. Please share this with your friends and family. Don't be stingy, y'all. <laughs> Other people need to hear it. <laughs> Maybe you need to go back and catch the replay yourself because there were so many jewels dropped, and I don't want y'all to miss anything. So over to you, Dr. Lisa, what about you with stress management? Well, I, I say this a lot. I live by my calendar. And if it's not on the calendar, it didn't happen. It's not going to happen. And it never happened. And I, I use my calendar even to schedule my personal time. So lunch is on my calendar. And if you don't see lunch, that wasn't a good day. So because I'm tech focused, every I need I need to see everything. Uh, field days for my son, uh, paying bills for my mom. It's all on there, because that relief that relieves the cognitive load of trying to remember things. I'm I'm in I'm a woman of a certain age, <laughs> so. 
I, you know, I, I need to just be able to rely on what I see as the work that I do. And so with boundaries, the thing that I, I live by and that I encourage the, the folks that I'm meant to live by is you teach your clients how to do business with you. And so if you're answering texts and responding to emails at 11 o'clock at night, that's on you. That's a decision you made. And the way to pull back from that is you've got to respect your boundaries or no one else will. So when you set the rules for your clients, you've got to also live by them. You might be having a longer day and working at 11 o'clock, but you're not responding to emails at that time, no matter what the notification says. Use, if you're using workspace, use your send later option. You can write the email at 1135, but it's not going out till eight o'clock the next morning or Monday morning if it's Friday. Because when you protect your time and your peace, you can be a better business owner and make more better use of the time that you have. Now, I'm not saying that you've got to color code your, your every single thing on your calendar like I do. <laughs> but if it helps, whatever style of organization you need, to manage your time and your productivity so that you also have room for your majesty and taking care of them, then you've got to do, you got to select that thing and do that thing. And for me, it's living by my calendar from vacation to lunch to manicures and pedicures. It's all in there. So if anyone wanted to stalk me, <laughs> they can just, they really just need, to, need to steal my phone and borrow my finger. <laughs> can find her by. I love that. So we're, we're down. We have four more minutes left and I want to leave time for Jarvis, Jarvis to close us out. But I, I want to make sure that our transformational wizard gets a, gets at least a minute in on, on his thoughts. And then Jarvis will ask you to come on and um, and close us out. I am checking the room. If y'all have comments um, and all of those things, please drop it. I am still reading it. Um, but for you, uh, what do you what do you think around stress management? Just give, a, give us a quick one minute. How, how do you do it? I got you. Um, I am very clear about my writing practice. I write in my journal. Um, sometimes I, I experience um, heaviness that is a tint of words. And so I have to get it out of my body and onto a page so I can see it from an objective point of view. I meditate every day. I pray voraciously, honey. I be out, God, girl, let me tell you, you know, I have a, I have a very, eye line is real distinct, okay? Um, and then also I spend a lot of time in nature. I recently moved to a farm. So I'm, I'm like in nature all the time with the trees on the mountain in quiet and peace. And my connection to the earth is truly sacred. So I just do things that I know that nourish me. Being in water nourishes me. Being, climbing trees nourishes me. Um, being with beautiful people nourishes me. And I just honor what I need at any particular time. Also breath work. I do a lot of breath work. Now I just want to do this this real quick little breath work yes. to give us this before we time out, having both feet planted firmly on the floor, feeling your pelvis anchored in your seat, finding that nice, easy, long spine, drop your chin slightly to lengthen the back of your neck. And I invite you to lower your gaze or close your eyes to bring your awareness into that internal space. We will take three collective breaths to the count of five. Five being the number of transformation, learning through life experience and journey. This breath will be done in and out of the nose unless that is unavailable to you. Take a full exhale, emptying your lungs. Deep, regular inhale in. Exhale out. And we begin. Inhale, one. Take your time. Two. Five, exhale, soften. Two, four, five, inhale, ease. Allowing yourself to expand. Five, exhale, stress. Releasing any and all things that do not serve you. Inhale, love. 
allowing yourself to be filled with the divine. Exhale, fear. Allowing your breath to return to its normal pace. Knowing that you are love, that you are love, and that you have everything that you need already within you. And as we inhale, we slowly blink our eyes open. Wow. Y'all, I can't think of a better way to close this entire webinar. I am so grateful uh, to be up here with my friends and family in, in our committee. <laughs> uh, Jarvis, thank you so much for giving us the platform um, for us to be able to you know, provide this information. And we're going to turn it over to you now. Right. And Shelly, I want to thank you for that amazing leadership in this conversation and moderating this talented group of experts. Uh, to everyone in the audience, I just want to encourage you all to take some time to look each and every one of our speakers today up, learn about them, learn about their business. And I have to highlight that we will be back next month with another uh, incredible panel. The focus is going to be around strategic um, legal foundations for your business. So please stay in tune with everything we're doing with our training and professional development committee and have an amazing end of week and stay safe out there. Thank you all. Peace, my loves. Bye, everybody. Bye. Be safe out there. Bye, guys. Great stuff. Thank you.